You are listening to Questionable Material with Jack Helmuth and Brian Sack. So, Brian, we are lucky today. You're lucky today, Jack. You're lucky. Yeah, thanks. I mean, it sort of interrupts the flow of what I'm saying, but you're right. I'm a very lucky guy. I'm certainly aware of that. You have privilege. uh, Yep. I do have some privilege. I also uh, fought for a lot of what I have. So anyway, um, what I wanted to say is I've got humongous news, Brian. What? We have this today, uh, a special guest. I got an interview with um, his guy named Adam Bone, and he has uh, he is the chief of police in Portland, Oregon, and they have just successfully undertaken uh, defund the police. No kidding. Wait, they actually that actually <laughs> happened. They yeah, went and so, defunded so it's the just police. Happened in Portland, Oregon. It's a that's a big city. So this is not just some chanty crazy idea thing. They actually went ahead and did it. So this guy, so they've apparently gone and done it in Portland, Oregon. So we can talk to him about uh, about the movement and see, uh, you know, just how successful it's been so far. I, I, I guess it's been in place for a couple of days now. Wow, that sounds interesting. Okay, I'm up for that. Great. Yep. Awesome. So uh, as I said, uh, our first guest is what's that? That is my vibrator on my phone. Your vibrator on your phone? Well, you know, it's not okay. a, technically a vibrator. It's a, it's a, the vibrate function. Okay. You sure? You sure about that? Yeah, no, it de- it's definitely, it's just a vibrate function. It's very delicate. Okay. But it kind of lets me know I have a message. What's that? Uh, where's your phone right now on your body? I don't think that's important. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, so what, why is your phone vibrating during the middle of like what's about to be a huge interview for well, us? Well, cause I, I just got a Twitter notification. Oh, you'll have to get to it after the show. Uh, you know what? It It's telling me that I've been out virtue signaled on Twitter. What? My other Twitter friends have out virtue signaled me and I need to get on Twitter and let people know that I'm uh, well, I mean, in, I, I on the moral high ground, as it were. Well, I, mean, I think anyone who knows you knows what a good, decent man you're. Uh, a Doesn't matter, Jack. Leader. Doesn't matter. I'm going to, but they already know it's not a contest. No, I need to let them, I'm going to, I need to pull up pictures of uh, black and Hispanic friends and, and post them and let them know. Uh, I I just, I need to go. I can't not virtue signal. Okay. Well, don't marginalize your friends just based on that, but well, you you, you do that, that that's what you do. I don't know if you've been on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, but that's what you do, Jack. Okay. I it's, I, I wish you could just stay for this interview. It's a pretty big deal. Nope. I need to get into my Rolodex. I need to, any, any marginalized friends I have are going to be in a photograph with me on Facebook and Twitter in a matter of minutes. Okay. I mean, they're, they're just good people. They're just good friends. They accomplish no, no, authors and businessmen and business I, women. I can't look at it like that, Jack. I need to look at them through the, the lens of identity. Whew, okay. J- then go, go. I'm sorry, Jack. It's okay. That's just how it is these days. Just leave, please, so I can start the interview. Ask a lot of questions. <laughs> and it's great, great advice. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think that means he's left. <laughs> I wanted to welcome, like I said, we've got an amazing uh, guest here with us today. His name is Adam Bone. He is the chief of police for the city of Portland, and he has just uh, successfully undergone a uh, defund the police movement. Adam, are you there? I am there. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm doing great. I am now the head of the Portland Police Department. That's awesome. So have you been a police officer your whole life? I have not. And that is why I'm the head of it. Oh, oh, gosh. OK, what what have you done your whole life? What What's your occupation? My occupation, I think, is pretty obvious. I'm head of the Portland Police Department. OK, I'm sorry. What was your occupation prior to this moment? I was an Uber driver. Mm hmm. And a Lyft driver. Oh. I would kind of alternate between the two. Now that the police has been defunded, um, I have so many questions for you. Uh, how are things going so far? Uh, you're two or three days into this. What obstacles are you are you finding with the, your department being defunded? Uh, hiring people, obviously, is a problem. Okay. Uh, because when people want a job, it's usually in return for some kind of compensation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. right now we're limited to Papa John's gift certificates. How how did you get those? I I have a friend who works at Papa John's and he said he could swing me a few. It hasn't been a huge draw. I'm being honest. Uh, we do need people on the force to help us do police things. 
what's the plan then to uh, grow the force and, and, and start compensating these people? Well, that's my job. <laughs> I, I would have to, to figure out a way to fund them. Yeah. My job is to figure out a way to raise money for the police department and to, to perform p- policing is what we're calling it. Um, uh, in, in the Portland community. You said that you in fact were doing a lot of the policing yourself. I'm yeah. that seems very, uh, you've never been a police officer and the chief of police generally runs the department. Isn't necessarily isn't out uh, on the beat as they say. Right. So what is your experience? Like what, like what's your day like? Uh, well, I get up, have a cup of coffee, get on the you street. Sort of, you can skip to the policing part of your day. Well, oh, um, pretty much I skateboard <laughs> all over the city and just let people know that there's a police presence, but it's friendly and harmless and will get out of your way. Well, why, uh, why a skateboard? For the obvious reason that a police car is expensive to buy and operate. Plus my squad car was stolen. <laughs> what? Yeah, it got stolen. And so it's really, you know, and obviously without a budget, we can't buy another one. So we're sticking with uh, the skateboard for now. Or I could do a walking thing. The, the beat. Thing. Yeah, we call it the beat in the police business. Right, right, right. And well, can't you just... Uh, do a police investigation and get your car back? You could, if you wanted to offend somebody. Well, how is it offensive? Just investigate. What, what's well, offensive about that? Well, investigate because then you're, you, you might think someone has committed a crime. You might approach them to ask them questions, and that's hurtful. Okay. Do you have a description of the person? I do. <laughs> okay. Um, how did you obtain that description? Oh, I was there. Oh my gosh, you were around, you saw it happen? I was in the car at the time and he entered in the passenger side and he had a weapon and he said, get out. And as an unarmed police officer, I put my hands up in the air and I I said, no harm will come to you. And I opened up the door and got out. So you wanted to assure him that no harm would come to him. Which was pretty much obvious because I did not have a weapon. Why don't you have a weapon? Do you know how expensive a decent gun is? Uh, yeah. But hadn't you already purchased those to begin with? No, we gave them away. To, you gave them away to who? Uh, rioters. <laughs> what sort of giveaway is that? It, it was kind of like a token of appreciation. Okay. I mean, maybe some like, I, I appreciate a lot of what the protesters are doing too, but maybe give them some coffee and donuts or, uh, uh, you know, free bottled water. Yeah, we did that too. <laughs> and That's a terrible idea. What are you doing? Well, we're trying to make up for past injustices. And uh, we thought, or I thought, as the head of the police department, that one of those ways was to give away everything we had. The, the symbols of oppression, as, as we call them. Well, okay, what are some of the early mistakes you've been making? Because it sounds like, obviously, when anyone starts any sort of job, there's a learning curve. We make all sorts of mistakes that we eventually have to get aware. What are some of the early mistakes you've been making? Well, other than getting a carjacked. Yeah, I mean the carjacking obviously is is unfortunate. I should have maybe locked my doors when I was driving. Um, that's a thing I I will do in the future if I do have a car. Uh huh. A skateboard obviously is is less less in demand since everyone mm-hmm. in Portland has one. <laughs> that's the, okay. That's true. I learned a few things. Uh, one is that people get very upset when they get robbed. Oh. Yeah. So we received calls and I, I would go to the location of the incident and I'd talk to the person and they'd always be very upset. Well, I was robbed. My business was set on fire. This is my whole life here. It's been destroyed. And it's sad. Y- yeah. So, okay. So what, what do you then do to help those people? I leave. That's not helping them. No, I mean, gee, there's nothing <laughs> really I can do because you gave all your guns away. I don't really have the manpower it takes to really follow up on this stuff. And I don't really, um, I'm not capable of, of doing much other than offering them a kind of a, a platitude or a, basically saying, I feel sorry for your loss. And isn't, isn't that a shame? Okay. Well, what about issues? Okay. Th- this is, that's an example from sort of what's happening 
right now a bigger picture, but obviously policing is much more than that. It's, um, you know, so let's take domestic ex- domestic abuse as an example. That's something that the police can investigate and can help um, hopefully uh, take care of. Have you gotten any sort of calls about um, issues more like that? I've had a few. Yeah. Where okay. a woman calls me and says that her husband has, is, is, is being violent and, and I'll just show up there and, and he says that he's not. So case closed. So wait a minute, but you have to believe the victims. I, I couldn't, she wasn't available. He said she was busy. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a red flag. Just so you know, that may have been a, another mistake you made. You know, policing is hard. I'll be honest. I didn't expect it to be this difficult. So I went back in the hopes of talking it out. And, uh, and he replied by beating me senseless. <laughs> that can't have been the reply you were looking for. No, I, you know, I, I was all, of, I kept screaming, you know, can't we have a conversation? What, let's talk about this. This is not what I signed up for. You know, pretty, I threw everything at him and I got nothing in return. Wow. Gosh. That sounds like a, a bad, how did you finally deescalate the situation? By running. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, what happened to the, to the poor woman who called you in the first place? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> you think I'm going back there? Well, you should. I you maybe know. get some more of the gang uh, and go over there. What gang? The, your other police officers. I don't have any. Uh, well then go get some uh, citizen journalists or something. Citizen journalists. They, they, they're hopeless. <sighs> okay. So you, but you said you got multiple calls. So you get, you had another call that day. What, what, what happened with your other call? I forwarded it to voicemail. (laughs) Oh, that's sad. Sometimes I I get that reaction. You know, it's a church laughter when I'm feeling sad and I accidentally laugh. I apologize. Um, Wow. That's just, well, okay. Then what about, why don't people just call 911? Okay. If you're this busy, then at least call 911 and and help will be on its way, right? Well, 911 is has changed. What do you, what do you mean changed? Well, you'll I mean, we've been defunded, right? So, uh you've get a, a different user experience when you call 911. Okay. Uh, that's very strange that I'm going to hold on. I'm going to call Portland 911. Sure. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time or may have changed to a different area code. Okay, so, well, it sounds like you're having a rough time, but yeah. my heart really goes out to you because clearly you took this job with um, with good intentions, it seems like. Let's say there is a local community bank that is currently being robbed. You get the phone call. What do you do? I skate over there. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too far. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to be exhausted by the time I arrive. You'll need your energy. Yeah. And then I kind of scope the situation from a distance, maybe. How far? Across the block. Uh-huh. Just kind okay. of see what, you know, can I look in the windows? Can I see what's going on? How many people am I dealing with? Am I dealing with one perpetrator or two or three? Yeah. Is he still going on? Is it over? Good. Um, and if it's not over, if, if it's active, then you just kind of wait. Because you kind of hope that they'll maybe change their mind and decide not to rob the bank. Maybe they'll give the money back. They'll have second thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then he bolts out of the building uh-huh. and runs into a car with his friend. Good. And that's when you pop out and arrest them? Well, I, I, I pop out and start skating after them. Yes. Okay. Cars are very fast compared to skateboards. No, I've, I've noticed that. So obviously I am at a disadvantage and I realized that pretty much very early on mm-hmm. that the odds of me catching up with them were incredibly slim. So you've, you've had an experience already where you have not been able to chase someone down. Yes. What, what happened? I don't, I mean, I know my end of what happened. Okay. What's your end of what happened? I wasn't a- unable. I lost track of them but who what 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 was the crime that you had had, had, were trying to foil i pick one (laughs) 
Okay. All right. I got it. I got it. All right. So let's go back to this bank thing. So basically you're just hoping that the bank robbers realize what they're doing is wrong. It's yes. immoral and hope they just have a change of heart. Yes. And that's okay. why, that's why we've started a new effort called please do not crime. And it's like a tagline. We're hoping people will, will, will catch on. Yeah. And I, I, I spray paint it in places when I skate by. Uh huh. Isn't that illegal? Yes. <laughs> but who's going to do anything about it? That's kind of what I was thinking. Well, in this modern era where criminals turn themselves in, shouldn't shouldn't you put yourself in into the maybe two nights of jail? I'm not going to be the first one to turn myself in. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Well, look, I I trust these criminals. I, I know that uh, I know they're probably all good at heart. So I I mean, good good luck with that. I suppose. Thank you. Um, let's just go through another scenario. Um, this is a sad one. A bomb threat is called into a, a high school. Obviously, they call the police. Uh, you've got your, um, uh, you know, unit normally where you, you would call send them in to hopefully, you know, search for the bomb and then defuse it. That yeah, sort the of thing. bomb squad uh, is what we used to call. Yeah, it. bomb squad. That's what you exactly. So what what do you do in this scenario under the new um under your new defunded police department? Well, I would ask them. Like, okay, how many students do you have? Oh, we've got 130. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why don't you have them look for it? <laughs> and then just ask them to walk around the building and look for stuff that looks weird, out of place. <sighs> okay. You know, there's you a backpack that doesn't belong. Oh, it's or, all over a school. Every backpack doesn't belong. That's right. That's why it's difficult. <laughs> Policing is hard. Well, I, I know you keep saying that, but you, you shouldn't have people, you shouldn't have students doing that. The students need to leave the building. We need to protect the children first and then, right? Well, that's, you sound, is that, you sound just like the principal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm not even a principal. Yeah. That was his opinion. Okay. And I said, well, I'm the head of the police department. Do what you will. Well, gosh, it seems like um, it's uh, going to be a long road for you. Uh, any final thoughts? Uh, anything that you would like to tell your community about what you need? Everything's a long road when you have a skateboard. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, the thing we need the most is money. Uh huh. Because what we've learned is that with money, you can buy police officers, training, hopefully a squad car or two. <laughs> just to do the patrol thing. I'd love to have some kind of defense mechanism, an <laughs> item I can use to, to defend myself if I'm set upon by people as, as I have been. Uh -huh. I'd, I'd love a hat. <laughs> uh -huh. Nothing fancy, but just something that says police on it. Just so people know. And a uniform would be good too. Because my pajamas don't really convey authority. <laughs> well, uh, keep keep dreaming there, buddy. I, I, I and good luck to you. Thank you very much. You're you're welcome, um, uh, Adam Bone. Everybody, this has been questionable material with Jack and Brian. Thank you for listening. That was questionable material. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Make sure to review the podcast. Make sure to visit qmpodcast.com. 